Welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train Jared Free coming to you live from the quarantine cabin on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. We're here Monday through Friday with your emails, your stories, your questions. I say it every episode. Let me say it again. Thank you for listening. Thank you for telling a friend. That's how it all works. You listen, you watch on YouTube. If you're not there, you can get subscribed right now. You tell a friend, you support the sponsors, you tag a bitch. Tag a bitch in my Instagram uh, post. That's how it all works. It's it's given the gift of J Train, and I'm gonna give you the gift today because I'm very excited about today's guest. We listen. Some of you may know I have a um, I have a, 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 a I've I've stumbled into the the world of charcuterie. And somehow I have ended up being some sort of an authority because I talk out of my ass loudly. Um, and But I wanted to bring on um, a real authority on the charcuterie world. It is so exciting. Such a pleasure. Marissa Mullen, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. I feel honored. This Marissa, is amazing. This, this is amazing. If you don't know Marissa, her Instagram account is called at that cheese plate. At that cheese plate, you all need to go follow. You all need to go to support. Um, and she has a book out right now that you can all purchase. It's called That Cheese Plate Will Change Your Life. She's holding it up for everyone on Instagram land. And, and, and she also has another Instagram account called Cheese by Numbers that helps you basically explain cheese by numbers and we'll go backwards. Yeah, so cheese by numbers is the method behind crafting the perfect cheese plate. So it's a a six step process where step one is cheese, step two is meat, produce, crunch, dip, garnish, and it breaks it down into sections. So it's really easy to build, no questions asked. I love this because one of the thing that people, people will say that I have a problem with grapes. I don't have a problem with grapes. I have a problem with proportions. What you, what people will put in, and this is, you're basically mapping out the proper proportions for people. Yeah, yeah. With your produce, you got to make produce ponds. With your salami river, I have these terms for everything just because it visually makes sense in my mind. But uh, you can't overload a produce pond with too many grapes because it will balance off balance the whole plate in itself. You know. See, this is the type of thing. So, what? How we got together is that you and I are both like, you know. You're talking charcuterie. I'm thinking, you know, comedy stuff. I'm making fun of boards. And I was like, maybe this could be. So we kind of got like fixed up in a way creatively where they were like, hey, if you guys want to have like a TV show type of thing, start talking. And we started talking. I was like, she gets it. She gets where I'm coming from. You get my vibe. Yeah. I mean, we had a proper charcuterie chat in person. Yes. And uh, I feel like we we met on a lot of levels with our, our charcuterie <laughs> thoughts. Absolutely. And so explain the book for people. And I want everyone, if you're going to go buy a book, this is the book you got to buy. And if you're into charcuterie, if you're into things and, and, and it, it, I wouldn't say, would you call yourself an expert? What would you call yourself? I mean, I'm definitely a food stylist. I'm mm. a photographer. I've been in the world of cheese now for seven years. So yeah. I have relentlessly questioned cheesemongers been to dairy farms yeah met dairy farmers have been in the cheese community for a very long time i've never been a properly trained cheesemonger Mm -hmm. um but i have grown up around food my entire life like my dad's a self-taught chef and Mm -hmm. my cousins used to live across the street from a dairy farm in vermont that we go to all the time um and i'm just a a cheese fan so but most importantly you're thinking of these things and 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 i think the one thing that frustrates me like my perspective is i'm the fat idiot who's hungry at your party yes i show up to the party i need to eat and your board looking nice is secondary to me uh, uh, than to will I be satiated. Yeah, and you want the practicality of the cheese plate. That's what yes. it's there for. It's there to feed you. You don't care about any acorns or rosemary sprigs. You're like, where's the cheese and meat? What pairings should I eat? I mean, I I've, I've told you I have a, uh, uh, I have a fetishized dream <laughs> of picking up uh, a pine cone from someone's cheese plate and eating it in front of the person who made it and have them be like, are you eating the pine cone? And I'll be like, yeah, it was on the plate. How, why wouldn't I fucking eat it? Like I, I have Something this off limits here. <laughs> yeah. What, what, why would you put it there if I couldn't eat it? That's my dream. 
But yeah. I, I, so the book is a way to lead people to make the proper decisions, right? Yeah. I mean, the thing with the book is that it's a blueprint. That's kind of how I see it. So mm -hmm. there's 50 different cheese plates in here for every occasion that you can imagine. So you, you um, have the, you have the Kroger's cheese plate in there. Yeah. I, the first plate in the book is called the back to basics plate. Love and it. It's basically featured three very basic cheeses, manchego, brie, and cheddar. Mm -hmm. And simple items from the grocery store that you can purchase. So you don't have to, you don't, ha you don't have to go to the grocery store where it feels like you have to wear a tux to walk in. You, you can go to the star market, the Kroger's, the food mart and just get, oh, yeah. cause my girlfriend and I, we got, we did this like wine tasting and my friend was like, get pungent cheeses. And then we went to like, I'm looking out the window at it, um, Essex market and they have a yep. cheese counter and yeah. I'm the idiot being like pungent please <laughs> well the thing is is cheesemongers so you probably went to saxelby cheese which is an yeah. essex market legendary cheese shop um they know what they're talking about and the thing with this book is like it's the perfect size so there are plates in here that use fancy cheese mm -hmm. and to support local cheesemongers cheese businesses amazing stuff and great pairings so what you do you just bring the book into the store with you and you say hey do you have truffle tremor and they're yes. like yeah here you go and so, and, and, but then if you don't have access to that, you can just replace it with another goat cheese or something that's like similar just so the pairings still work. Um, but, because but at least you're at, but at least I'm sorry to interrupt, but at least you're all, you're speaking the same language as the guy. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely well, teaches you terms to say, um, if you're a cheese beginner, like the whole beginning of the book is just basic cheese terms, which is really helpful. <laughs> like I, I legitimately, this guy could have been like, yeah, you got, oh, pungent cheese. You got to buy this Ferrari. And I'd be like, of course, <laughs> yeah, like sure, I would have gone not? along with anything he said. So yeah. that's why I think a book like this is important. If you're going to be, you know, entertaining, Go mm -hmm. get the book. Go right now. That cheese plate will change your life. Go follow at that cheese plate. I'm a fan. It is J Train approved. Um, I we we got to talk future of charcuterie. Where do we go with considering the pandemic and everything that's going on? Yeah, man, loaded question. Um, I would say first of all, grazing tables. We might not see as many of them anymore. I'm, I'm excited about, about that. that. <laughs> no, I'm happy about that. I, I I hate the grazing table. To me, that was a lazy way of looking like you did a lot of work. Okay. Well, first of all, <laughs> that is my well, opinion. <laughs> because, well, I'm just saying, like, you, with the grazing table, it was so huge. Yeah. That I, mean, you would I think go that they, they're practical for an event like a wedding or, you know, a massive totally. party where you're trying to feed a lot of people and it looks like a beautiful tablescape or like a, a very nice yeah. centerpiece. And then you get closer and you see that there are nice pairings and cheese that's cut so you can pick it up with a toothpick. We can't really touch things now in quarantine. Mm -hmm. So like that might not be in the picture. Well, and my, my huge issue with the grazing table is that if it's at a wedding, OK, it's assumed there's also dinner. When yeah. you do a grazing table at your house, it is such a grand thing that everyone yeah. oohs and ahs, but no one's like, is there going to be a hot meal too? What's going on here? <laughs> like I, I, my first question when I see a grazing table is, I hope to, oh my God, are we going to have like, to get uh -oh. dinner on the way home? Is this it? <laughs> yeah, is this or, it? Or the grazing tables where they put like, cheeseburgers on the table as part fuck of the that. board. Fuck that. I don't want a cold <laughs> cheeseburger. I want my cheeseburgers hot off the grill. I don't want... This is the thing. This is where the hunger is put second place to the picture. And that's yeah. what really grinds my gears. I'm like, holy shit, I got to fucking eat cold burgers so this person can get a like. To get the pick, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I listen, I get needing the pick. I'm in that world, too. Well, the thing is, is with cheese, when it sits out, it gets better. You're supposed to leave cheese out for an hour before you serve it. So that makes this sense to be on a grazing that, table. Fine. But a burger, don't you don't want to sit no. out for an hour. Get no. out of here. And it's like, you know, it, it's funny. Like, I, I, I rail against these favors that people seemingly can. These favors that people say they're, they, they can claim they're doing good. But you know it's selfish, <laughs> like, like, right? Like yeah, oh, putting yeah, like can... putting an acorn is selfish. That wasn't for me. That was for you. Putting the acorn is just part of the process of creating Marissa, this 
this plate. I, you don't so, have so, to eat it. I wanted to do something with you, Marissa. I'm I'm so happy to have you here. Everyone, go follow at that cheese plate. That cheese We're plate like will change your life. The devil and the angel. I know. Well, now and you're in cheese white. I'm in, in black. Middle. Yeah. So I want to bring up. I emailed you before the show. These are sent to me from listeners. Okay. Yes. Now I want to. We'll go in order. I sent you an Instagram link first. Let's go to that one first. You tell me okay. what you think of that cheese plate, and we'll play it. And this is all on YouTube. If you're on YouTube. Get subscribed to the channel. You'll see all the plates we're talking about. I'm going to post this on my Instagram as well. So I want to go through some. Some of my audience sent me their cheese plates, their charcuterie. You tell me what you think. You being, you are the expert. What do you think of these ones I sent? Let's start with the first one. Okay. So disclaimer before we begin. I think that expressing your creativity through cheese plate, you do you. I'm not here to judge, but I have sure. suggestions. So okay. You can take them or leave them, but they're I, just I appreciate I appreciate that perspective. I will say, yeah, I'm happy everyone who gives it a shot, but you will be judged for that shot. But okay. He's here to judge you. I'm yeah. here to say, here's a suggestion, but you do you, you know? Okay, okay. cool. <laughs> All right, the first one. So, we have a cheese plate video. Yes. Um, I do like how they pre-cut the hard cheese. That's important. You always want to pre-cut your hard cheese. So you want to pre-cut the hard cheese. You do. You want to pre-cut okay. the hard cheese, maybe a little bit. Like, even if you have a hard, like a big hard wheel cheese or slice of cheese, you want to just take a few slices to cut because being at a party with like a hunk of cheddar and a knife in it, it's like, where do you, how do you even, you feel okay. embarrassed doing that? This is great. The only time I work. get, uh, the only time I rail against the pre-cut cheese is when it's like a craft packaged cheese because I'm like, yeah. and, and I'm cool with that, but it better look like the rest of the board. If you have pre-cut yeah, cast, it's got to fit in. You yeah. you know, I don't want a jalopy at the car show. Exactly. So you, uh, if you have a jalopy oh, a cheese. Craft single, make it look nice on the plate. Yeah. Yes. Craft singles can't be next to whole wheat stone ground crackers. You, you, you're trying to be something you're not. But go, so what do you think of this board? Okay. Um, my problem is the pomegranate seeds, I would say. Um, okay. They, I see that they are sprinkled on the top as a garnish. Yes. But the thing with pomegranate seeds is that they are a little bit messy. Um, they tend to stain everything. And mm -hmm. they're not a garnish like something that I like to use garnish with rosemary, which is, it's like, it doesn't leak everywhere. It's, it's sure. a dry garnish. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, and so, like, I necessarily wouldn't want to have to, like, dig through pomegranate seeds to get to certain items of the plate. I couldn't agree more. Nothing bothers me more than when someone thinks they're salt bay with oh, yeah. the pomegranate seeds. Like, get the fuck out of here. Either put them in a – either stand a by your decision, put it in a ramekin, either stand by the decision or not. This is a halfway decision. They're not confident in the pomegranate seeds, so they put it out. What do you think of the the, the – well, let's go to the next one because that's a okay. video one. Let's go to the next one. This one, what do you okay. think of this one? This one is confused. This one has a lot of ideas happening at mm -hmm. once, and from first glance, I'm just, like, a little confused as to, like – At, at first glance, here. it looks like garbage. It looks like you took out garbage and this was put out back – for Lady and the Tramp to eat. Well, so what's confusing, first of all, is there's like a Santa knife and then a fish ramekin. And mm. there's I no, mean, aesthetically, there's no just discernible before we get to theme. the food on the plate. Yeah, the, the, the theme of the bowls and the knives are kind of mismatched, which is cool. That's, that's yeah. the style. Well, this is again, into they, the food. they will hold on. They wanted to go so big to distract us from them not even having the appropriate amount of, uh, of uh, silverware. So they're like, go to the Christmas silverware. We need something. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, take, yeah, we yeah, need yeah. something. The, okay. Yeah. Um, I, the, the honeycomb concerns me. Being How just did it even there. get there? It, that, that is, again, you, a honeycomb. Like, that is how messy would a, stuff. Like you messy, cut into that, sticky. that's going to start to seep. Like don't, you don't want to yeah. put that directly there next to I pink M&Ms and tomatoes. Yeah, I'm with you. Because, and also, or I don't no, know go ahead, I'm sorry. What are the pink one? What are the pink things on the plate? I thought those were, I guess they're yogurt something. I thought oh. for a second that they were going to. Yogurt that chips. They, 
I thought they looked like a yogurt, something covered. To me, I, I honestly thought it was plastic that got chipped off of something. Like, okay, but I didn't think of the risen honey being a problem because it's going to ooze down. Yeah, it's going to ooze down onto the hummus below, which I don't know if you really want honey hummus. No, per se. no. Get, I want that made by someone who is 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 learned in the hummus ways. I need like an Israeli guy going, yeah. we do a hummus thing that has honey in it. You, <laughs> I know you think that's crazy, but we're professionals. Listen to us because it's yeah, from yeah. our homeland. It's I don't like- want it from, you know, Johnny, Johnny Santa Claus knife. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next okay, one. Okay. Um, oh now, this person actually messaged me. They sent me this one. They said the cheese is under the glass thing because oh. it's smelly. What is your uh, What are your thoughts on covering a smelly cheese? So if you cover smelly cheese, I'm sorry, you're going to make it more smelly. Cheese needs to breathe. It needs okay. to aerate. If you, <laughs> I, if you I have love, a smelly I cheese. I love how wrong this fucking idiot was. I love it because they took out the, like they treated this as if it's a crystal covering that like they were like, well, this is what this is the cheese covering. It's like, no, but then, this like, where isn't. do you put it when you serve? Like, where do you put it when you serve the cheese just on the side? And then it's just in the way. I, know? I, I don't even look like I can, I don't think I could lift that. I'm not, I'm not like a weak guy. It heavy. It looks, it looks heavy. heavy as shit. So you got to hold it with one hand, put your plate down, then use a knife. That's the fucking, uh, that's, that's, that's the, uh, the, the CrossFit games. <laughs> that, no, it's charcuterie <laughs> CrossFit. Charcuterie. Right? Fit. Charcuterie yeah. fit. So what else do you see about this board? Um, so the toothpicks, I would have put the toothpicks on the side and given yeah, they you look like. dangerous. You can start to use your toothpick to put, like, I get you want to get people started to start serving themselves with the toothpicks, but it does look a little sharp in there. Uh, yeah, the toothpicks, the they look, you know what they look like in feudal times when they put up a fence that were the, <laughs> yeah. the, the pointy things out so you couldn't jump over it. What do you think of fi- these figs? So I love fresh figs. I think they're a great addition. They don't have a too much overpowering sweet flavor. I see these mm. are drizzled with maybe a balsamic glaze. Okay. Um, that's a choice. I feel like explain when a woman says that's a choice and then stops, <laughs> it's usually not well, a good I'm, sign. I'm looking at the plate and I'm like, okay, balsamic drizzled figs. That's like, you know, something of a meze Mediterranean Italian idea. Sure. And then you have the peppers next to it. Okay. The great a fig hypothetically go with a pepper, a roasted red pepper, maybe in the family but i wouldn't put it together as a pairing i would like, like if i was to, doing like a, an italian like um antipasta plate i'd probably do mm-hmm. like roasted red peppers and a ramekin fresh figs on the other side of the plate over in like more of the yeah these don't look like they land. it it looks like they had a plate and then they threw it on the corner like it should it was be like an there. afterthought yeah, yeah. It was an afterthought what is that um, with the in the ramekin what is that thing with the toothpicks that coming out that looks like, like it's i think that's marinated artichokes okay seems, which makes sense if we're going with this um this antipasta platter sure. vibe but then the other side of the plate gets into like hummus land again with the yeah. pita chips and the celery so just like the the idea and the theme behind this plate i think is a little confused mm-hmm. um but i do see i mean I wonder what's under that glass container. I'd want to know what cheese that well, is. Well, I wonder. Uh, yeah. I, I, well, it's hiding a fart, apparently. Uh, it's so <laughs> smelly, they had to cover it up. That is not a good sign for the people <laughs> at the party. Oh, what's under the glass? Oh, that's the smell like shit cheese. We had to cover it up. It smelled <laughs> so fucking bad. Yeah. That makes well, me. Oh, I can't wait to like, eat it. <laughs> if you have smelly cheese in your fridge, 100% of the time, it will smell worse in your fridge. You have to take it out and let, let literally it let it air out. All yeah. right, let's go to the next one. What do you think of the snap peas on this one? What do we think of snap peas on a charcuterie board? So I use snap <laughs> peas, um, especially on you like a them. spring cheese plate. I feel like okay. they're a great neutral ground for like a goat cheese, for like a Ooh. fresh springtime vibe. Okay. Um, I don't think I would necessarily pair them with like a chicken liver mousse or whatever this is in the 
Well, container. I, I mean, you were kinder <laughs> to the chicken liver mousse than I would have been. I thought someone took a dump in that box and then they spread it out to make it like that is the most it off-putting like some sort container. of like, mousse. <laughs> it's something. I don't know it's what it some is. Sort of thing. Yeah. Um, All right. Let, the salami yeah, it, needs work. Uh, 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 now you are the inventor of something called the salami river explain yes, that indeed. to the people listening right now so the salami river is a stylistic choice um of meat flowing down the center of your cheese plate and mm -hmm. it also serves a purpose because when you serve charcuterie a lot of the times it comes in a package and it's all stuck together and it's kind of mm -hmm. hard to take apart if you fold the meat into a salami river, you literally take a piece out and then it just kind of accordions out. So it never really got it. Fat. Now, what do you think? Like, as far as like, should people be wearing gloved hands to fold their meats? How? Yes. Right. Yeah. If, if yes. you see a you bare touch hand... every piece when you're folding a salami river. So yeah. I always use gloves. I mean, I don't like having slimy charcuterie hands. So sure, I like neither. using gloves, but, um, yeah, I mean, like, especially nowadays to be sanitary, you you should use gloves or wash your hands. Like for this board, for this board specifically, like the salami in the middle looks fine. The salami on the right actually looks pretty good because it looks like it's got some spice to it. The prosciutto is a mess. Prosciutto is difficult. It's difficult. How do you it's because difficult pr meat. <laughs> prosciutto does have a labia looking thing going on like it's just never it's never I, when it's done right i know it's done right when it's done wrong i'm like this is a mess someone puked up a bunch of dead skin and put it on the plate how do you how do you suggest people go about plate plating prosciutto plating prosciutto okay so you have your package of prosciutto right mm. take out a slice so it's dangling in your hand imagine i'm okay. holding prosciutto yeah and just let it fold in on itself so it has these nice little folding oh like i'll show you i, I probably have um one in the it, book this which is in the book listening can't hear but this one here see up top see that's beautiful that's a so that's a fold. plate i'm digging into this is the burrata bar plate everything you need to make a burrata and the, bite and the book is called that cheese plate will change your life go 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 get it we're gonna do some emails jtrain podcast at com. i want to do one more board okay okay the last one I want to do is this dessert board. What are your thoughts so, on the dessert boards, on the breakfast boards, on these kind of pe these things that have taken over the idea of charcuterie and put them into a different world? What are your thoughts here on the J Train podcast? Marissa Mullen's going to give her thoughts on non cheese and meat boards. Yeah. So I say you do you again, mm -hmm. but. Don't call it charcuterie. I see this every day. People tag yeah. me and stuff like this. There is no meat to be found. Charcuterie means meat. There's no <laughs> meat to be found. There's no like literally it's the French well, term. Is, for there is nothing meat. more there is nothing more American <laughs> than hearing being like charcuterie and then being like, Yeah, that means food on plate. <laughs> and then it just taking it over. Yeah, and then taking it over and putting bacon and eggs and being like, Look at my charcuterie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's the French word for cured meat. So I, I feel like that's the first problem. Don't call mm. it a charcuterie board. If someone sent this to me and said, hey, do you like my dessert cookie board? I'd be like, mm. cool. Yeah, it's not a cheese plate. So well, I don't this have is, anything to tell you. But this is my this is my this. You you nailed it. This is a cookie board, bitch. This ain't this is not a dessert board. If it was a dessert board, we'd see a a variety of goods. This has one good. So this is what? this is cookie. You, yeah, yeah, you this went could to be a one, dessert board though, right? But to me, you went and got cookies. Like yeah. when you put it on a board, you're now. At, it's like when you go. You ever watch like Bar Rescue, and then they're like, if you put it in this cup, it's a dollar more because people think they're getting added value. To me, when people put a bunch of cookies on a board, they're like charcuterie. Like now they're fancy. <laughs> No, well, you went you went to fucking, well, you know, Star Market and got these, yeah. I think that displaying your cookies like this is a very tasteful way if you're okay. having a party. Because imagine if you had like seven plastic containers of cookies from Costco just sitting on the counter and you're like, "Eat your cookies, here's your dessert." I, I totally agree nice with that. Plate. You're you're but at, don't you're, call it charcuterie. Don't call it charcuterie. Don't call it a dessert 
uh, board. Call it the cookie board. Don't cookie board. set. Yeah, yeah. Let's set expectations. Not to you know, we don't want expectations to outdo the reality. I think what happened is when the cheese plate trend became big, mm-hmm. people started calling them cheese and charcuterie boards because that's cheese and charcuterie fe- featured on these plates. And then that kind of went into the charcuterie territory of people just assuming a board was considered charcuterie. Just anything and then, goes. And then you have like your lobster on a plate and it's called charcuterie and that just isn't. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like uh, a board. There's a difference between a board and charcuterie. I love it. Listen, uh, Marissa, I'm so happy to have you on the show. That was so much fun. I want everyone to go follow Marissa Mullen right now at that cheese plate. Go buy the book anywhere you can buy books. That cheese plate will change your life. That's the book at cheese by numbers. That's her other account. I'm going to have it all over my social media. Let's do some emails. You ready? All right. We are sponsored, people. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Brook Linen. Bringing comfort into your home is the ultimate form of self care, and now more than ever, it's important to take care of yourself and each other. You spend a third of your life in your sheets. Why not make it insanely comfy? That's where Brook Linen comes in. They're the internet's favorite sheets, over 50,000 five star reviews and counting. I love these sheets. Jess and I, when we moved into the new apartment, we went on Brooklyn and used the promo code and bought new sheets, and they're unbelievable. And now with you know the quarantine and being home more, what's more important than making your home like the most comfortable it could ever be? And this is one of those small ways. You don't have to move. You don't have to get a pool. You don't have to put in new drywall. Get some sheets. It's like you redid your room. It is a revamp that is very low investment, and it's going to make your nights so much better. I, I'm a huge fan of their sheets. I've had them for years, and I've rebought them. That's how much I love them. Brooklyn and puts comfort first with bedding, towels, shower curtains, bath mats, and even loungewear that makes you feel like you've never left your bed. These days, it's never been harder or more important to get a good night's sleep. Brooklyn and will help you create a bedroom oasis that's the perfect place to escape. It's hard to imagine a summer stuck inside the house, but if we have to do it, keep everyone safe. Uh, I want to be as comfortable as possible. If you're working from home, staying comfortable is the best way to stay productive. And Brooklinen is there for me during every part of my daily routine. A good night's sleep is priceless and increasingly harder to come by. So Brooklinen helped me build a bedroom oasis that's a perfect place to escape. I'm a huge fan of what they do. Um, they've, they have hotel quality sheets where they've cut out the middleman and make the mailman work for you and bring you a brand new bedroom. Brooklinen's Memorial Day event is going on now. You don't want to miss out on all the big savings, including their newest hammam and linen collections. But if you can't wait, get 10% off your first order and free shipping with promo code JTRAIN, 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 JTRAIN. Only at brooklinen.com. That's brooklinen.com. Brooklinen, everything you need to live your most comfortable life. Go, go, go. Go support them. JTRAIN podcast at gmail.com. JTRAIN podcast at gmail.com. His married ex reached out in quarantine. Oof. Okay, you ready? Jared found the I found the UF podcast, J Train Podcast and Bachelor Live Scream just before quarantine. They've been a saving grace, feather feather I've shared with the group chat and can't wait for you to come to Chicago once after this is over. A huge topic you've enlightened your listeners on is exes reaching out during quarantine. But what about married exes? My boyfriend and I have been quote unquote friends for two years, but have been dating the last five months. We're pretty transparent about our our past relationships, experiences, and get a kick out of the awkward, funny stories. Last year, his long-term college ex got married to the guy she met right after they broke up. While she and her now husband were dating, she had reached out several times asking for dating advice from him. To my knowledge, he never initiated the conversation, only responded. Last night, we were talking about one of my friends whose ex recently reached out. I mentioned that you talked about it on your podcast and how this is happening a lot during quarantine. He replied saying that his married ex had reached out last week to ask if he wanted to watch if he if he'd watched the Parks and Rec reunion since they used to watch that show together. He said he left her on red for a few days, then responded he hadn't. I didn't ask if she responded or if there was more of the conversation. For context, we live in Chicago. She lives hours in another state. He and I are 26, and I believe she just turned 24. Their breakup was messy and fucked him up pretty bad to the point where he didn't see anyone past past date one or sleep with anyone for almost four years. Why does she keep reaching out? Why does he respond? Is he covering his ass by telling me so I don't... uh, 
I don't get to, uh, to be upset if it comes up later, even though he still waited a week to tell me. Should I take this seriously, or is it just harmless conversation? Should I ask him to cut it off? And if so, how? I am feeling confused and a little insecure, but I'm not sure if that's warranted. So what do you think? Wait, can we do the math real quick? So they, she's 24. Yes. He the, didn't sleep with anyone for four years. Okay. And then... No. So how was this a college the relationship? Ex, so he uh, he's twenty six. Okay. They're twenty six. Hold on. For context, he and I are twenty six. They broke okay. up um two years. They were friends for two years. Um last year Just his long term it's his college ex got married to the guy she ex. met right after they broke up. Okay. Cause that's one thing. College relationships. Yeah. They're always a little messy. Always. It's like yeah. you're in college and you're in this relationship. And this one especially. I mean, if she she broke up with him, I assume. He, yeah, because it was messy because he's having a hard time getting over it. So it feels like it was him getting dumped and not, you know, and not the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. And then she gets into a relationship directly after that, marries the guy. Yeah. And so I feel like she either A, is a little bit manipulative. Yeah. And sort of wants to kind of still be in this guy's life, although she broke up with him, which uh, manipulative. Well, the, or she's to, just like really bored in her marriage and just needs to feel a spark again. I don't know. Yeah. Why does this, she keep reaching out? That's the first question. She keeps reaching out. You're right. I think for excitement, because yeah. when, when someone says that their breakup was messy and fucked him up pretty bad to me, that means she broke up with him and then, kept him in the loop, kept him at arm's distance while they were broken up and he kept coming back and it never worked out. And yeah, and, and some, she knows that she could always get a response from him, which is totally. like the, the number was, one reason why people reach out to their exes. They want to hear... They want to back. know that, yeah, someone that had been with them would still answer them. So it is manipulative, but also she got married after college. So like, there's a big part of this where it's like, you know, she, they said they live in Chicago and she lives hours in another state. There's not a lot of cities around Chicago that are like bumping Chicago. Chicago's a great city. So she's hours away. That means she's in bumfuck with her marriage. And she's and now her only outlet, because she didn't let herself be single, her only outlet is the one guy that she can get a rise and have variables with. When you move to there the suburbs. Some, there are some nice dairy farms outside of Chicago. Yeah. She can go so, visit for fun. So she's at a dairy farm <laughs> milking cows milking all cow. day. Yeah. And she's like, well, you know, I, uh, my husband's asleep. He won't fuck me. Ah, what do I do? Okay, I'll reach out to the old ex to see if he'll answer me for shits and giggles. And it's like, so it means nothing to her other than she gets a variable in her life. Uh, why does he respond? He responds because I think there's a like a the nature of like not shaking the boat. Like some people, yeah. Put I mean, you he in- probably doesn't want to feel bad. You know, he doesn't want to like make her. It's like it's easier to respond sometimes than to not because then you might start something and it's just like just not not try to rock the boat. Exactly. And and also to that point, it's like you don't respond and like to even say like if there's someone in your life that just like nicely reaches out and you go, hey, I'm with someone new. I would appreciate they they could put you in the position if they don't get it. They're, they could put you in the position where it's like, well, I was just being nice. Well, you think yeah. everything's about sex? And it's like surface level, they're kind of right. But you're more right. You're more the one. And it's like that's I, – I agree that it's very difficult to do that. Like it's very difficult to just create conflict out of seemingly nowhere when there is conflict. Yeah. I mean maybe there there's a lot that we might not know about this story too. Like – I, I mean, know, he could be, I mean, to to be fair, he could be texting her more than he says, and he could be we keeping this going to see, you know, he could still have feelings for her, and you know, all that stuff. I, I, I mean, that's another road. But I would say to this person who's writing in, who's the other woman, I yeah. do empathize with why he responds. I do understand why he's told her. Of course, he told her not to get in trouble. He, yeah, I mean, he, I, it's good that he told her. I feel like if he didn't tell her, that would be sketchy, and that would be the situation of like, oh, maybe he still has feelings for her. But since he did tell her, I feel like he's just like, listen, this girl keeps texting me, I'm just trying to be open, telling you what's happening, and that's good. 
It also makes sense that it was a week later. Like, it's very weird. Like, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. He gets a text from her and he goes, look at my ex is texting. Now he looks like he cares too much. Now, you know, like a week later, he 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 had to bring it up to get out of it. Like, there's no there's no there's no middle ground. And and, (laughs) you're you're screwed either way. (laughs) There's a lot of people people text that they would never go and actually make time to see. Texting is this weird land of like, like there's a guy who I only send the picture of the big naked guy that everyone was sending oh, yeah. around. <laughs> like I, and then, like the, there are people that I would never, I would never like be like, hey, you want to get lunch? Like I'd yeah, be like, no, no, no You're like here's this picture of a naked dude because like a text yeah. is just. It's like empty, you know? Exactly. But so, it can be so full at the same time. It's so complicated. I know. <laughs> it, 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 I always say a text is like a gift. It's like, you know, and you just want to open it up. It feels good to open a gift. You just don't know what's inside. So it could be a yeah. sweater <laughs> and it could be a million dollars. You don't know. The yeah, same box, it fits in both. So yeah. I do understand how she's going a different place. To me, if I'm her, what should she do? Um, if you're the other girl or if you're the, yeah, I would say like, you know, try to not get too caught up in it because I think it's good that he's telling her. Yeah. Um, I think if she were to say like text the ex-girlfriend that could open a can of worms and like unnecessary drama. Um, but like be careful. And if this girl keeps reaching out over and over and you see that this is a pattern, maybe talk to your boyfriend and be like, Hey, this doesn't make me feel comfortable. You talking to your ex, maybe yeah. stop responding. <laughs> I'm with you on that. I also think that she, if she agrees with us, I think what we said in the beginning, as far as like this person, obviously um, from their end, you can only speak what where assumptions are. Listen, if she, uh, the boyfriend might, we don't know how much he's lying or not, but, from our perspective, we both just said, it sounds like this girl gets a rise out of texting you whenever she isn't getting from her relationship what she gets out of you. Yeah, with, exactly. with that, if, if this emailer agrees with us, she should voice that. Hey, it seems like this woman, like to me, uh, she keeps texting because her life is a little boring and you offer a little bit of a spike in the heart rate. And, and yeah. like, and if you offer that and just go, that's just my feeling. Like it's, like it's annoying, yeah, but like there you go. And now you're like now you're doing what we're doing, and he can go, oh, you think, or he can go, and you can go, yeah, it's kind of annoying, but like that's why she's doing it. And well, because sometimes too, I feel like guys don't really think about these things objectively like that, and you have to like give them a hypothetical question for them to be like, oh, actually, maybe yeah, that's why, you know. Yeah. It's and, like, and sometimes it, it, it's like white or black with guys until you're like dig deeper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well. I, I always say this with uh, with my girlfriend. I always have this like, it, it's funny that like I felt like when we started dating, when you get serious with someone, as a guy, you get pulled into this world, this this war you didn't even know was happening. Like oh, this yeah. woman's war of like, like we're setting up the apartment and like we're setting up the apartment that we live in and like she's kind of telling me like, Oh, we got to have this and this. I'm like, why do we need that? And she's like, and then she was telling me like how her friend's apartments are set up and how her friends want to show her the art that they get. And I'm like, oh, this is like your competition that I had no idea was even a thing. You know, oh, like, you unlock levels and levels of stuff once yeah, you're in a relationship. <laughs> the, the male competition is just so different. Like it's just yeah. like, and, and it's a, it's very much brute force and sex and money like it's kind of yeah, easy it's, stuff it's to very, understand like, animalistic yeah <laughs> like, just if you think about like the cavemen days it's like totally who's, who's stronger who's who, more like <laughs> yeah who could provide the most food or some shit yeah. and in the female world like going back to charcuterie like yeah. a lot of this feels like like when i look at a charcuterie board i can tell when it's some. Uh, when it's someone trying to say something about themselves and it's usually women that are trying to say to people like the reason I started with charcuterie is that I tweeted out I can tell what type of parent you'll be by your charcuterie board and <laughs> and then people started sending me theirs and I was like you'll be this type of parent you'll be. and then yeah. 
what I came to realize is that just like children, every wo- there's every woman has a picture of a charcuterie they made and uh, on their phone, and then they all think it's great. So I do understand. So when I see like there was one charcuterie that I saw, and it annoyed me because it was so the and it was like it, it annoyed me for women, and it's on my highlights right now. It's this woman who's like, look at my charcuterie board. And it's literally a half a tree on the table. <laughs> and, and on the tree is like a be- like an amazing, like, and, and it's like, she's like, spend all day on this one. And it's like, no, you fucking didn't. You Did can't even. Did she cut even- down the tree stump? Well, that's the thing. That's she didn't effort. even, she didn't even acknowledge the, the, the like 20 people that had to have helped her in this thing you know give credit to the people who help you make a charcuterie board definitely sometimes it's teamwork you know this is my point it's like these people that have nannies but don't let them in any of the pictures it's like like, look look, i made this whole thing oh today was a yeah yeah, today was a drag i had to go all the way to the beach and i had only two hands it's like no you had two other hands so it's like it's this idea so the charcuterie world a lot of times when i see a board that's a half a tree yeah. You're like you're like at least admit for the other people who can't have half a tree at their house exactly. that you had help here. Like admit I mean, your and privilege. That's the thing. Like with cheese by numbers, it breaks it down. So like you see a cheese plate that's really intricate and beautiful, but then I'm like, this is how you make it. You can exactly. do it too. Versus you, it, like I don't know how to cut down a tree stump, so I can't you, teach you how to do that. The whole idea, the the the, the um, oh, I just put together a little something that amount of passive aggressive doesn't exist in the male world it yeah, yeah, just put a little so get together a little something and it's like guys are just nope. like here's a bag of chips <laughs> <laughs> but for the so i'm saying for this uh for this emailer if she kind of clues her in on her view of what this woman is doing he can kind of go he can take that or leave it he can either oh, go yeah. oh yeah. i'm gonna stop answering that and stop feeding into the manipulation or he's gonna keep going and then it's a different conversation we are sponsored, people. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by MeUndies. MeUndies, MeUndies, MeUndies. As a podcast fan, you've heard me and every other schmuck with a microphone blab about these bras, boxers, and briefs for years. But here's the thing. MeUndies is the world's softest, most sustainable underpant. It's like having an angel feather your nuts all day, every day when you're rocking MeUndies. They design their underwear for comfort and self-expression. Whether you go for a basic black brief or a unicorn print, you'll be feeling like a king. Point is, it's time to cut off your toxic relationship with your tattered old undies. I know you are hoarding some real works of art in that top drawer. Make the adult decision and get yourself on a monthly plan for fresh, clean underwear. And it's uh, listen, that's a great thing. Because what you can do is create an underwear conveyor belt. You can take, you can buy, the new one comes in. The old ones go out. And you won't have to feel bad about throwing away, you know, something that, you know, still kind of works. I think that's the problem with underwear. You're still, you're like, well, this works. Why would I get new? Well, because they're unbelievable. They're going to make your nuts feel like it's on a feathery pillow of dreams. MeUndies doesn't just make undies. They also have loungewear too. In the same fun patterns, your love like the underpants, but also as soft as the underpants. So you can make your whole body just covered in MeUndies material. I love MeUndies, and they're not going to stop until every single one of my listeners tries them. So I want you to try them. They have a great offer for JTrain listeners. For any first-time purchaser, you get 15, one five, 15% off, and free shipping. This is a no-brainer, especially because they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. To get your 15% off your first pair of free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash JTrain. That's MeUndies.com slash JTrain. MeUndies.com slash JTrain. We are sponsored, people. J Train is brought to you by Feels CBD. That's F E A L S. Feels CBD. I listen. I wasn't taking CBD a year ago. Uh, Feels F E A L S sent me, and I was like, you know what? Let's give it a shot. I wasn't a denier. I wasn't a hater. I was just like, let's see. Uh, it's now a part of my daily routine. I use it every day. Um, I, I do genuinely feel more zen, more zoned in, uh, less 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 burdened. 
Um, especially after, you know, a, a night of drinking, which I've been doing a lot of lately. Wake up, I take my multivitamin, I have a couple Advil and I uh or a couple Tylenol and I uh pop some uh CBD and I'm I'm living a less anxious life, I have to say. And, and the reason it was so easy is because they have a phone number you can call. They have a hotline that you can call that makes you feel better about it. You could talk to an expert, talk to someone who can let you know what the right amount, what it is all about for you. So I, I, I think that's the best part is that you can call someone um, and, and they also and they can kind of walk you through the process with their hotline, real humans you can call anytime. And and they also they have a little eyedropper thing. You don't put it in your eye, you put it under your tongue, but it tells you the dosage. It makes it really clear. So I think there's a lot of anxiety when it comes to like, well, what am I putting in my body? Feels makes it a lot less anxious going in, and you're gonna feel less anxious going out. Feels helps me feel my best. And it can help you too. Special for my listeners. If you become a member today by going to feels, F-E-A-L-S dot com, feels dot com slash J-Train, feels dot com slash J-Train, you'll get 50, five, zero, 50 percent off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash J-Train to become a member and get 50 percent automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. One more time. Feels.com slash J train. Feels, F E A L S dot com slash J train and feel better. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. Here with that cheese plate at that cheese plate. That cheese plate will change your life. That's the book. Marissa Mullen at cheese by numbers. Go buy the book immediately. Stop it. Go buy the book. It's all over my Instagram. Let's do, um, I want to do a little thing I called um, a deal reveal. Okay. Ooh. I forwarded you this email and we have, we're going to do, a, so I'm going to read the email first. Hey, Jared, really need help deciphering this text convo I had with a guy last night. To give you the background info, we've been having virtual dates texting for the last month and a half. We had our first in-person quarantine date a week ago and another one on Saturday. We had sex. You should know I usually like to wait a bit before sleeping with someone, and then I told him that. I really can't tell what this guy's trying to say, but they got the impression in person that he was very into me. Also, he has been, also he's been quarantining upstate and claims to be coming into the city just to see me. Let me know your thoughts. Okay, so Marissa, hmm. are you seeing anyone? Are, what's your deal? What's going on I'm with trying you? Trying to find your email. Um, so I'll I'm forward single. It, I'll forward I'm, it uh, again. Yeah, my email's all messed up. Um, I am single. I'm uh, dating the hustle at the moment. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Honestly, when you write a book, you don't have time to be in a relationship. I feel like I run a single person startup running that cheese plate because it's Absolutely. literally just me. And I just like right now, not my priority, but that's cool. Like I know. What was your last? Sure. Have you had people reach out? Have you tried a dating apps during quarantine? Have you tried any of these? Yeah, things? it's funny. So I had two exes reach out to me because of the book recently, which is okay. funny. It's like you you uh, you do something. It's like your birthday or whatever. You release a book and everyone so, comes out uh, of the woodwork. <laughs> so I have I have a theory where it's beware of vacations, holidays, and um, quarantines. And yeah, the, yeah. those are times that a breakup might come because oh, yeah. guys don't want to get more committed and a birthday automatically makes you more committed. Guys don't want to go on vacation with a girlfriend if they're not sure about the girlfriend. So before a vacation, they might end it. Got in and, and quarantine, as we've come to learn, a lot of people got dumped like the day, you know, a lot of people. Yeah, it's like a lot of people got dumped and a lot of people are getting into these like quarantine relationships and none of them are going to work when this is over. Well, we'll I see. Don't know. Maybe <laughs> they will. <laughs> so well, who knows? But I would also say I'm just the salty. No, it's OK. You're a little little you're, you got some Parmesan or Reggiano on that. So <laughs> I, I I but I would say um, you were taught. Wait, wait, there's another. Mo so beware the life moments because life mm -hmm. moments bring guys back. That is an yeah. opening to have another conversation. So life moments being career achievements. You released a book. Oh, all of a sudden, knock, knock. 
the exes come back because they go because and they, they all get come a, at once. They all come at once because they get a reminder. You're like you're posing with the book. You're you look good. You got the you know the you're done up for TV, and they're like, oh my god, I was. I, I, I was, she was, I had her at one point. I, I fucked up. I one time reached out to a girl cause she put up a hot Instagram. Like this happens yeah. all the time is a guy. Again, guys are simple and stupid and caveman. So these like, <laughs> so all of a sudden it's like your name comes up on wish Marissa happy birthday on Facebook. Oh shit. Marissa was cool. We used to date for this. Okay. I'll text her happy birthday. See where it goes. So this, so you had guys reach out. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, with, with quarantine too, it's like, we're all sitting inside with our phones. So, yeah. I mean, and you can't open to new. just be texting you, people. <laughs> yeah. You, and you can't find a new person to maybe send you a nude. It, yeah. It's I mean, if you go difficult. on the apps, maybe, you know, <laughs> I was on them for like the first week of quarantine. And then I was like, uh, I don't want to put energy into this. <laughs> it, it's a different type of energy and it is an energy. So let's yeah. let's go through these. She sent these text messages. So to review, um, they were having virtual dates and texting for the last month and a half. They had their first in-person quarantine date a week ago. Another one on Saturday had sex. She let him know that she usually doesn't do that, but she ended up doing it. And he's coming from upstate and to see her in the city. And he seemed very into her while they were together. You ready? I'll be, okay. let's play some J Train Theater. Hit the music, Shelby. Okay. I'll be him, you be her. Well, maybe you'll like, well, maybe you'll like someone like that. But until then, you got me once a week, winky face. Haha. <laughs> ha. So that does, does that mean that you'll be coming back to the city again? I don't know. K, 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 K. He wrote, I, he wrote IDK with a bunch of Ks. Uh, can I be totally honest? Yeah. Okay, let me stop this to say, when a guy says, can I be totally honest, you're going down a, it's going down a weird or bad road. You're it's opening never positive. that can of yeah. worms. He goes, he writes, I cannot get a read on you. Ha ha. Uh-huh. Uh, what <laughs> yeah, do Yeah, he you... wrote A-H-A. Aha! <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I cannot get a read on you. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah. What do you mean? No, 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 no. Four hmm. ends. He goes, hmm, how to put it? I don't know. I don't know you that well, so I'm figuring you figuring you out, I guess. Like, hard to tell if you like me, what you like, don't like, etc. I mean, we definitely don't have to text about this. I just was thinking, aha! <laughs> the aha is getting me. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm glad you're being honest. I do like you. Honestly, I think I just have these walls up knowing that you're fresh right out of a three-year relationship. Like, that makes me a little skeptical, like I've mentioned, but I really like what we're doing and enjoy spending time with you. His first text back to that, which hers is a very honest answer. Like He got out of a three-year relationship. That's kind of alarming. I mean, yeah. not alarming, but that's a long time, you know? And it's also something on her mind, and she's being very honest. She's... She's dating the way dating should happen. She's saying, I've mentioned, uh, that makes me a little skeptical. Like I've mentioned, she's already mentioned it, but I really like that we're doing what we're doing and enjoy spending time with you. To me, she's not being crazy at all. She's not getting ahead of herself. All she's saying is, let's keep getting together and getting to know each other. Yeah, and, quarantine so dating. He write, so the, he writes, okay, so I do like you too. So I hope you know that. Uh, here we go. I get why that would scare you, but I would remind you that where you were also in a relationship where you were committed and saw it being serious. I know, I know. I like that we're taking it slow. Only point being, I think we're both in similar spots. I feel like I'm very much over my ex at this point. Ha ha. I'm 100% over mine. I promise you that. But I doubt you want to start dating your next boyfriend during quarantine. So I think my big thing is I want to take it quote unquote slow, or at least I want to have every opportunity. To, I want you to have every opportunity to find the right guy. Like if you like me, I want you to like me when the world's back to normal. That so is an, yeah, go ahead. This text is after he came to visit and they slept together. Yes. 
oh, well, that makes sense because yeah. guys always pull this stuff. They're like, oh, you're like, I love you so much. Mer, mer, mer. And then they hook up with you. And then it's like, yeah. I'm going to slowly back away because you might be getting obsessed with me. They're, they're, I, We're I, chill. I, the term, <laughs> yeah, the term gaslighting gets used a lot. This is, this is a lot of gaslighting. I mean, this yeah. is because... And listen, I don't think he's in this. He sounds. I don't think we're making him sound evil. He sounds evil. Uh, oh, the yeah, way we're just reading his texts. <laughs> we're just reading his texts. I mean, I'm putting I'm putting my interpretation on how he's saying it. But to me, there's no other way to say it. Like if, when he writes. So I think my thing is I want to take it slower. At least I want you to like I want you to have every opportunity to find that right guy. Like why is yeah, he putting it on her? Like, it, well, he should just say, hey. I don't want to date you during quarantine. He starts this by putting it on her. The move yeah. that he did is he wrote, the first thing he writes, one of the first things is, I cannot get a read on you. That's not yeah. what he, he is trying to say to her, tell me what you want. Because I know what I want. And I just need to know that you, I need you to know what I want by making it, I can't get a read on you. Instead, he should have just said from the beginning, hey, we should take it slow during quarantine because I don't want to really date you that seriously until life is back to normal. Or if absolutely, anything. <laughs> if anything, or say, hey, I'm going to have sex with you, but that doesn't mean that we're in a serious relationship. Like yeah, I would have, and, and that's a hard thing to say to someone, but that's what he, he's doing this retroactively. He's like literally going in circles and then backwards. And, just and, to and, like and, and the reason the emailer, she's confused the honest one is always confused. He's oh, yeah. being dishonest. He is. He was. He 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 wrote a check. His ass couldn't cash, which was I'm really into you. That made her sleep with him. Now he can't afford to cash the check, and now he's trying to make sure she doesn't cash it until they're out of quarantine, and she holds on to it and doesn't go to the bank. And yeah. I mean, let's keep reading it. Um, okay. Like if you so, like me, I, I want you to like me when the whole world's back to normal. That also sounds like it's out of a fucking. Uh, movie from the 30s. Like, if you like me, I want you to like me when the world is back to normal, kid. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I like that we're taking it slow. Oh, no, it's down the page more. Oh, oops. Yeah, I get oh. that. That's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get that. <laughs> With three T's. <laughs> At the end of the day, I feel like we vibe. And I want to keep getting to know you. Not looking for anything in specific. She's right. Okay. He writes, okay, good. You're a cool girl. I definitely like hanging out with you. You fuck pretty good, too. Oh. Red flag. <laughs> I see it waving, the red flag. <laughs> so, and then he writes, so I'm happy to keep getting to know you better. Oh. Okay. Rewind. If we were to say this text thread, <laughs> his two texts in one sentence, mm -hmm. he basically is saying... You're a cool girl, and I like hanging out with you. You fuck pretty good, too, so I'm happy to keep getting to know you better. <laughs> it's brutal. If you didn't fuck <laughs> good, if you didn't fuck pretty good, I'd be out of here. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Care. Yeah, I don't know about you. Listen, I I don't know if you know when we were having sex. If you weren't uncomfortable having sex before, now let me know. Let me let you know I'm judging you through the sexual act to know if you'll be kept on the team. Like, that is... <laughs> Fucking. Oh my god! Oi! Okay, she so doesn't you even like she doesn't even talk. She's like, what? Are... I don't think I'm that hard to get a read on. Ha ha! Yeah, she's just trying to be nice. Like <laughs> maybe it was you saying you didn't want to have sex than us having sex. I really wanted to have sex with you, just not just in general. So I didn't know if that was gonna mess you up. I also like that he had to put not just in general. <laughs> yeah. No, I want to have sex with specifically you, not general sex. Not like, just anyone. Even, it's, it should be inferred that he wanted to have sex with her because yeah. he's visiting her in New York. Okay, or wherever, the city. <laughs> I promise we're fine, smiley face. I didn't want to initially. Maybe even more than fine? Oh, way more than fine. See, now she's like lifting him up, which she doesn't need to do. Like, he was nervous that mm -hmm. sex meant they were together. Because he has a huge ego, and now he's trying to unravel that in the most destructive way possible by making it, I don't want you to get messed up. It's like, dude, you were a part of this whole thing. Like, yeah. I, and I, I can understand someone listening to this could be like, 
This is massively fucked up. I do. I understand that, and I agree with that. I would say to the listener also that, like, this guy, you know, plain and simple, he wants to have casual sex without having to break up with someone, which if someone's out there and you're dealing with someone like this, like, yeah, this guy's a, a, a maybe ghoster. This guy's a maybe get weird guy. And it's not because you did anything wrong. It's because this guy is so um, has such a large ego and is so um, worried about how like about being honest that he's being more of a liar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And his his behavior is just very strange. It's like he's like the whole thing starts by him saying, I want to be honest with you. But then like asking her a million questions. <laughs> To be yeah, honest, it, instead. it's just like, him getting himself out of a responsibility position. Yeah, totally. So, so he writes, good, wait, go on. You didn't. So I promise you I'm fine. I didn't initially. And then I wrote and then he wrote maybe even more than fine. And then you wrote. Oh, and way then more she than wrote, fine. Good. Wait, go on. Look at now. He's worried. You didn't want to initially. Huh? Now he thinks he's being accused of something. You didn't want to initially. This is so confusing. Um, sorry, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> no, it is now. it is confusing, but it's also I see what he's doing. He's yeah, like what he's doing. See, is I get why she's writing in because I'm confused yes, with her. I and get you're the but guy, I, and you get well, where he's coming from. I get, and it's like <laughs> it's yeah, we're here, we're here to help. Um, and he's like, you know, this is like one of those guys that wants to be a good guy, and he's doing everything except just being straightforward and honest. She yeah. was straightforward and honest. She's like, I'm here to get to know you and see what happens. Yeah, we had sex and that was fun. I don't think that means that we're in together, but it does mean that I should have the respect of a call if you're not looking to hang out again. And he's taking it. He, His mom told him he looked handsome in a suit a few times. So he's taking it as, man, if this ends after we hooked up, I, I'm the most destructive person in this person's life, which isn't the case. You just have to un, you know, go back and say, hey, I said a lot of things that maybe sounded like I was promising or don't say those things going into sex. You know, it, it, it's, you can't go back, but now that we've gotten here, he has to go back. A, uh, he has to make sure that he, he, he could be, he's, he's, uh, he could make a comeback, but he's not doing it. Yeah. So sorry. I keep go, we keep, go ahead. We keep going sideways. That's okay. So, uh, but I changed it's my worth mind going LOL. sideways. We are taking this text by text. We gotta. But I changed my mind, LOL. You changed my mind. I just generally like to wait a little bit. But I like... But like I told you. Oh. Like... Okay. I just like to... I just generally like to wait a little bit, like I told you. Well, I won't make you regret it. See, I don't trust any promises in a text. He's already said, I promise once, and now I won't make you regret it. I'm glad you changed your mind. It's nice to know we're compatible in bed. Uh, <laughs> it's nice to know we're... Now he goes back to being douchey McDoucherstein. <laughs> it's nice to know we're compatible in bed, but definitely very interested in the rest of you. Oh, you like my mind? So on that note, I'll say goodnight, wow. and I'm very happy to plan another trip to the city to come see you. Okay, good. I'll be looking forward to it. Have a good night. Good. TTYS. Talk to Who you says soon. Who TTYS uh, anymore? Like a old, he's like I a dad. I said that in like fourth grade <laughs> on AIM. Here's a, we, I like that we went text for text on it because it's very illuminating. I think to anyone listening to this, I, I, I can see what he's doing. I think for her, she needs to like, let him know, like you got to go to him and be like, Hey, I'm not going to deal with this fucking feel me out shit. Like, she has done nothing wrong. I'm looking to get to know you. I'm looking to make a plan. Um, I'm looking to, like, when this is all over, go on dates and be taken out and be taken seriously like a normal fucking adult. And if you're going to play the game of having sex with me and then trying to get me to agree that this isn't serious after we have sex, then I don't want to see you anymore. Yeah. Like, I Again, think that's I, it, communication. Yeah. And, but I know that's harder, easier advice to give than it is to say. Because yeah, totally. She, I think maybe hearing us kind of laugh at this, you know, you would hope that like she looks at this and goes, okay, j we're helping. We're trying to like understand the beast you're, you're, you're dealing with. This yeah, beast is a guy. He's manipulative. He's it's being like, manipulative. He's confusing as heck. And like, yeah. I, and it seems like she likes him too. And, and the fact that it's like, she's being honest and 
totally saying how she's feeling. And it seems like she does really like him. But then in turn, he's like, well, I like, uh, we're compatible in bed, but I'm definitely interested in getting the rest to know the rest of you. It's like, it's dude, like, don't even make that, pro- say that. <laughs> don't even make that promise. Just be, and, and I think which the, the emailer needs to just understand that like he can, I, I listen, a lot of guys do this that do end up getting married to someone. Okay. Mm-hmm. They, they become serious. They're someone's husband. They're someone's boyfriend. I'm not saying this guy's an evil monster or he can't mature, but understand this is the type you're dealing with someone who wants to have sex casually that two months from now you might be going, he does, he might have a conversation. You'll probably have a conversation with this guy. That's like, I'm not trying to get serious. And it's like, and you, and a lot of people get in a position where they blame themselves. And it's like, there's not, you have been honest. That's all you should be. Yeah, totally. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. Marissa Mullen, this was fantastic. This was so much fun. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You know what? It's actually really nice to not talk about cheese plates all the time. So right? <laughs> it's like a refreshing, like talking about dating is so fun. And I, it, we should do like a charcuterie dating. Like, we should do ab, like some, we should match people somehow. with match a charcuterie. people based on their charcuterie plates that they send you. I like this. We gotta, we're gonna, we're gonna figure something out because that's why we initially met, and, I, and I'm so happy we met. You're so much fun. And this was amazing. And everyone, please, please, please go buy the book. That Cheese Plate Will Change Your Life. That is the book right there. You can see it on YouTube and on the video. At That Cheese Plate, at Cheese by Numbers. Marissa Mullen, thank you so much. I'm Jared Freed. We're here every Monday through Friday. Keep on telling people. Keep on sharing the word. Keep, 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 keep. Thank you so much. Boom. <laughs>